Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to take a look at the energetic reset and reconnection between Mars and Venus in Leo. We're going to talk about what this energy is about as it's very interesting how both Mars and Venus are going to be in Leo making a conjunction between 18 and 20 degrees of Leo, and that is after each of them has already gone through a T-square with Saturn and Uranus. So I will talk about what that means, and we'll look at this in terms of masculine energy, which is associated with Mars, and feminine energy, which is connected to Venus. Now, Venus and Mars are known as the lovers. They're known as having a connection, the giving and receiving, how they work together in harmony. And in this area of your chart where they are conjunct, there's going to be a reset. There's something that's being recalibrated, and we're going to talk about that in today's show. Now, the reason why this is significant is because Venus and Mars have not been conjunct since July 2019. So it has been two years since they have been together in the same sign. The last time they were exactly conjunct was around July 5th and 6th of 2019 when they were together at one degrees of Cancer. Then they both traveled together through Cancer, through Leo, and into Virgo. And this was about the middle of 2019, July, August, September. And that's when they were on the same page in terms of their energies, their themes, and their intentions. Since that time, each of them has undergone a retrograde period And they have been through some big conversations and big changes as each one has had a conversation with the outer planets. So what we're seeing here in the middle of July 2021 is that now they're each in Leo. And you could think of Mars in Leo as a king, Venus in Leo as a queen. They are coming together in a union. They are balancing each other now. They have come together to have an important reconnection, but also to share what they've learned. Now, the other thing that's really interesting about this conjunction is that it's also happening when the moon is in Leo and the moon will be conjunct each of the planet. So the moon will be conjunct Venus and then conjunct Mars at the same time. So we have a very interesting dance here between that moon in Leo being our inner world, our needs, our sense of how we receive energy, being also recalibrated and reconnected with our own masculine and feminine energies. And that's why I felt that this was especially potent and important. So in your natal chart, you want to identify 18 to 20 degrees of Leo. And this is where the energies are syncing up and coming together. That's where there is this conversation that is really being led by Mars in Leo. That's because he is strong in Leo He is very much a king. Of course, Venus holds her own. And you could even see the moon as being the inner child, the child within. Because that Leo energy is very playful. It wants to have fun and release, take a risk, maybe do a little arts and crafts. It's very expressive. So here we have three personal planets conjunct in Leo really activating this part of your chart and asking you to have courage, confidence, take a risk, do something that lights you up. What do you need to do to basically turn up your own light, to crank up the wattage, so to speak, that makes you come alive? And this is a return to yourself, a return to a sense of self, a sense of power, tuning into what you need and what you want. That Leo energy has a very strong will. It wants to be seen and it wants to be recognized. And the ways that we can do that in a very healthy manner is to first recognize yourself, recognize how much you have shifted and changed since 
the middle of 2019. Now, this definitely brings up relationship themes, and you can look at this as how your own relationships have changed, whether those are romantic relationships, whether those are siblings or family members. Of course, we have all kinds of relationships in our lives, but this is more specifically about a lover or having a lover or what it means to love another as you love yourself, the sharing, the connection, the passion, the ways that that Leo energy wants to roar, wants to express itself is really going to come alive here in the middle of July. And I wanted to talk about this because not only is it significant in terms of the two-year cycle, that both Venus and Mars have been on, but it's also important because each of these planets just had a very big conversation with Saturn in Aquarius retrograde and also with Uranus in Taurus direct. So let's go through each of these because we are changing at a very deep level. We're changing how we relate to each other and how we relate to ourselves. That Leo energy brings us into what do you need? What do you need to feel loved? What do you need to feel recognized and seen? But how are you giving that to yourself first and not needing another to provide that or to be an overgiver? Because sometimes that Leo energy and it's important to look at the shadow side of it, that Leo energy can be very self-involved, it can be narcissistic, it can be a taker, it can say, me, 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 look at me, what about me? Um, I want this to work for me, I want this to come to me. It can have a very small world, if you will, because of that sense of I'm all about myself or I'm just very aware of what I need and what I want and that's what's on my radar. So that's more of the shadow energy of this strong Leo. But as that energy opens up, it starts to open up the heart. The heart expands. The ability to feel loved just for being yourself expands. The ability to see that it's okay to share. It's okay to open. It's okay to give and receive. That's part of what's been shifting here as each of these planets interacts especially with Saturn. So Saturn retrograde in Aquarius has moved back to 11 degrees and each of the planets has opposed that Saturn right before this conjunction. Mars opposed Saturn July 1st and 2nd. Venus opposes Saturn July 7th and 8th. Now, when each of these planets is opposing that Saturn in Aquarius, there is something that feels stuck or challenged. There's a part of yourself, a part of your personal will, your personal desires that could feel like it's at a standstill. Uh, You don't know how to move, what to do. And that Saturn energy is about timing. So there's a pause here. There's a pause in the masculine. There's a pause in the feminine energies within you. And it's about looking beyond what you can see right now. Saturn in Aquarius is opening us up to the horizon, the bigger picture, and it's asking you to be very conscious and aware of yourself right now, to really objectively look at yourself. How am I showing up through these Leo energies? How am I looking at others' needs, other opportunities, other possibilities beyond my own sense of self. So that Saturn opposition tends to feel like a challenge. It can feel heavy. It can feel defeating or depressing because it has some kind of reality check to it. And this is where there can be a relationship conversation, for example, Um, something where you have a realization of what no longer works for you, what no longer interests you, what no longer is satisfying because it doesn't connect with your heart. And so there's this Saturn energy that's saying, well, what would be a new solution or a new answer here? And it might not be clear right away. Now, the good news is that this energy is working nicely with Chiron in Aries at 12 degrees, which is opening us up to more of who we are right now, as well as a new start, doing something in a new way, a new part of ourselves that can feel 
a little bit insecure, that's developing confidence where we can feel vulnerable because we're needing to do something in a new way, in a fresh way, but we've never been here before. And so there's a sense of, I've never done this before. This is brand new. I don't know what to expect. How do I plan? How do I prepare? It can kind of stir up more, especially in the nervous system or in our mind, the parts of us that want some kind of guarantee or certainty. But this energy is reconnecting you to a spirit of life. It's a reconnection to what makes you come alive, like what lights you up. And that's because Chiron is in Aries and then these other planets are in Leo, which are both fire signs. So there's this new fire rising, a zest for life, a zest for what you're ready to experience, try differently or try new. And it's really awakening more in our hearts because I'm feeling this heart expansion. I'm feeling the heart growing, but it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. It's sort of like there's something that's deeply changing within us that we've never done before. And so it's scary. But there is some type of release here. There's something that comes together that feels celebratory, that feels uplifting, that feels exciting and motivating. But it's been something we've had to work for or earn, so to speak. Meaning there could be themes right now where you have to do some work around relationships, where there's things that you're seeing in yourself. You're seeing something in your feminine energies or you're seeing it in your masculine energies. You're seeing it in how you relate to another that's showing you what you no longer want to do anymore as well as what you're ready to embark on next. So it's a big energy, it's a big theme, but it's required us to keep taking steps forward. And I'm getting that visual of even a resistance where there could be like this desire to go slower, to take your time. I get the image of wanting to maintain control in some way because it can feel so big that you don't want to go too fast. And it's almost like something pushing on your back saying, take a step, take a step, take a step, but you could have resistance and want to push back and not move too fast. That's kind of this energy I'm feeling where there's this push and pull because again, this is new territory. This is also in the fixed signs. And we've talked a lot about fixed signs. They are the energies of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. And the fixed signs like stability and reliability They resist change unless you choose the change. Unless you say, yes, I want this. Yes, I'm ready. I'm going to go for it. But until that point happens, the fixed signs just want to stay with what is known. So this can be a slower path for growth or life changes simply because that's not the energetic design of the fixed signs. So this is really interesting because... If the fixed signs had to choose, they wouldn't want to change anything unless it was absolutely necessary, unless there was a known reward. Like, why am I doing this? What's coming next? Show me. I want to see or feel or know what the next outcome or result may be. And yet that's not how life works. So there's something here where we are being required to take steps forward out of a comfort zone. And you could feel that resistance in yourself. You could feel this push and pull between a part of yourself that you know very well, but you're outgrowing it or you have outgrown it. Like your consciousness has expanded beyond that part of you. Your needs have expanded. That's what's interesting. The needs have expanded. The heart has expanded. I'm even feeling the emotional world has expanded. And so... There's things that are already in play here. They're already growing and developing. And now it's time for those next steps forward. But as Venus and Mars and Leo each oppose Saturn, there's a hesitation or a sense of, am I doing this? Is this right? What's going to happen next? Again, it has this push and pull attention and it's a checking in point that I feel is best utilized by drawing all the energy into your solar plexus 
and checking in on what you need right now, listening to your deeper desires, and also listening to the heart. So the Leo energy brings you into your desire to live a really good life that's in alignment with your sense of self. And so we're bringing our energy into this new sense of self that we're still meeting. It's like an introduction. It's like, oh, I didn't know this part of me existed. I ignored it. I pushed it away. I didn't realize it was there. I just didn't understand it. And this can be perfectly timed, by the way. It could be that you weren't ready to understand parts of your heart or parts of your needs or parts of your world. Um, What I'm hearing is like you could all of a sudden realize you have a different love language. Uh, You know, the five love languages, which is that book by Gary Chapman. And it's understanding, oh, I have different needs. I have a different love language that's more dominant right now. I have these changes in how I want to relate to people and what matters to me. So we're really tapping into more of what's within us but it could feel like there is a slowdown. Then each of these planets, Venus and Mars and Leo, is going to make a square to Uranus in Taurus at 14 degrees. Mars will make the square July 4th and 5th. Venus will make the square to Uranus July 8th and 9th. And with Uranus being the bigger energy, this is a liberation. Now Uranus in Taurus is ruled by Venus. So there's an interesting conversation here between Uranus and Venus that is looking at the deeper issues of self-worth. And what does it mean to be loved? How do you feel loved? How do you receive love? Receiving is the Venus energy. How do you feel really nourished and seen? What types of behaviors, actions, words feel loving to you. And this energy is supporting us in understanding more of what you need and who you are, as well as breaking out of any areas of your life that haven't felt loving or loved. Because this Venus squaring Uranus, it's often known as a softer square simply because of Venus's energy. But I feel like this is some kind of liberation. It's a breakup. It's a breakthrough. It's an awakening. It's a sense of, I can never do that again. Almost like you could have an understanding of your relationship patterns throughout your whole life. And because this energy is so intense, there could be an awareness of, I can never do that again. I can't do that to myself because it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel loving, I don't feel accepted, it doesn't connect with all of my heart or all of my energy, all of my needs. So I feel like there's these deeper messages that have been working with us that are showing us more of what we're really needing, wanting, and desiring. First, in relationship with ourself, and then in relationships with others, and that's others in your whole life. Uh, yes, we've been talking about more about romantic relationships, partnerships, a lover, you know, that kind of connection. But this also relates to all relationships in your life because all relationships in your life relate to you, comes back to you. And in fact, I'm seeing it as the energy of the solar plexus, specifically since This is where the Leo energy resides, but I'm also seeing it in the heart. So solar plexus, heart, chakra, these are the two energy fields that are breaking open. They're breaking open. There's something coming through, something coming out in your own consciousness that maybe you've already been working with. Okay, you could already be aware of it. You could already sense it and know what the themes are. But this is an energy where the changes are happening in July. And they're happening in a way that could be surprising, that could be unexpected, that could be like you wake up one morning and you just feel that it's different or you have an impulse to do something or there's something that can happen quickly when these energies make a square to Uranus because it is a lightning strike. It is electrical. It is fast moving. And it's something that's coming through into our consciousness 
to help us grow, to help us ultimately love ourselves more and to experience higher love in this lifetime. And that begins with love for yourself. So Venus squaring Uranus happens July 8th and 9th. Mars squaring Uranus happens July 4th and 5th. Now the Mars square to Uranus is more dynamic and can be very unsettled. It can be even a bit dangerous, uh, sometimes violent, uh, but in the context of relationships, this is something in your ego, in your masculine self, in your un, we'll call it the lower expressions of self, lower expressions of the ego that maybe you no longer tolerate. You're no longer interested in. You're just done with it. There's something that's moving through us. And again, the Mars energy is the ego. It's also the physical body. It is our sexuality. It is the part of us that knows what we want, what we desire, how to go for it. And this is more of a fast moving energy as it connects with Uranus in Taurus and is being reprogrammed. And I feel like there could be some revelations here around actions you've taken, things you've done. Again, this can be behavior related. And that's because of how Mars is how we move, how we go after what we want, uh, how we take action. There could be something here where you're awakening to your own patterns, behaviors, actions that you don't want to go back to. You don't want to participate in again. You don't want to be that version of yourself. And that's basically the overall arching theme of this energy. Because both Venus and Mars are being deeply reprogrammed. There's no going back to previous self, to a sense of what is no longer fulfilling, what no longer connects with your heart or your sense of self. And I feel like what we're doing is changing relationships, like in a very deep way. And it feels like almost like foreign territory, but it also feels like we're requiring more of ourselves. We're saying, this is my new standard. This is how I want to live my life. This is how I want to experience relationships, experience love, experience my creativity, experience my ability to play and have fun. These are all Leo energies, and I want to do it in a way that's really fulfilling, that really resonates with me, that really reflects what it means to be myself and to have this open, powerful heart. Very dynamic, very energizing. Um, This is where you could have revelations about current relationships in your life, current partnerships. This is where there can be a lot of breakups. Uh, This is where things can just fall apart if it's not in resonance, if it's really not what is true for you or true for the other person. This is where there could just be something that is gone, like it could end quickly. It could disappear kind of like you're just over it. And at the same time, it feels like another energy comes in where if you've been working on this theme or if you've already been aware of this part of your life and you've been maybe doing some reprogramming, reconsidering, you've been really aware of just relationships throughout your whole life, this is where the energy is changing permanently because of how rare this energetic conversation is. And that's one way to think about astrology is that these are various conversations that are happening and we're feeling it and we're sensing it as we are raising our consciousness around these energies. So Venus and Mars, the feminine, the masculine, having big conversations with the outer planets, being changed, uh, maybe having some surprises or some things that are unexpected that reveal to you more of what you want more of what you need, and more of who you are. So as they make this conjunction, July 11th through July 15th, they travel together between 18 and 20, almost 21 degrees of Leo, where they are exactly on the same page. And this Mars is like coming forward and saying what he wants, what he's about, what matters to him. This Venus is also coming forward and she has confidence and strength. She knows who she is. So there's an energy here where they're on the same page. They are recalibrating themselves together. 
This is a very passionate, loving energy. And this is helping them understand the truth of who they are right now. Then they each move forward and they move forward at different speeds where Venus is going to move ahead of Mars and she's going to enter Virgo on July 22nd. Then Mars enters Virgo on July 29th. And they will both be in Virgo for a few weeks, but not conjunct. And then Venus will continue on ahead. So we have this period of time here. Let's call it the first half of July, where relationship energies are stronger. And they're meant to show you that there's more ways to love. There's more openings. There's more potentials. There's more parts of your heart that can grow and expand if that's your intention if that's something that you're desiring or wanting. It could be that you even have clarity around some relationship patterns, themes, anything connected to love. You could have clarity since the middle of 2019. You could see how far you've grown, what has changed for you, what has shifted, what you've realized. These are one of these energies where it can't always be rushed, even when we feel impatient or we're ready for that next whatever. It's sort of like there's something here where it's important to remember that the longest relationship you'll have in your life is with yourself. And how are you loving, honoring, and respecting yourself? How are you really trusting who you are and feeling confident in what your heart needs? And the other thing to remember is that When the heart desires something, when the heart is open and it wants to connect, there will always be other energies to connect with. There will always be that next partner or that next connection point for you that's at the same energy. Everything's energy. Everything connects or disconnects through energy. And this is why the more that we're strong in ourselves in our truth and who we are now, the more that you will attract in and connect with those of similar and like vibration. So in your natal chart, you'll want to locate 18 to 21 degrees of Leo. That's where this reconnection is happening, where there is harmony, love, self-expression, beauty, passion, desire, we'll call it the best of Leo energies are going to come forth. And this is also where we are awakening to what love is. Again, new definitions of love, perhaps new understandings, higher awareness, higher consciousness. I just feel this energy opening up and unfolding. It's creating this beautiful ripple effect because of the work that's been put in. The work that's been put in, and this can show up in so many ways, whether it's the understandings you've had on your own terms, whether it's something you've been working through, uh, relationship patterns, relationship themes, something within a relationship. So if you're in a really strong, sturdy, awesome relationship right now, this can really support strengthening it even more. This can also support that there are more ways to get to know someone. There are more ways to have fun and enjoy life together, uh, to be on the same page, to look at what lights you both up and how you can share in those experiences. And that can be very exciting, especially in long-term relationships where you're really used to somebody, you know them well, you know what they're all about. But when we're always growing, there's more to learn with one another and there's more to understand and when you're in that type of healthy partnership where you're both learning you're both growing you have a lot to talk about or to share there's always more you know life doesn't get boring it just gets more interesting it gets deeper Uh, you get to know one another even more so there's support here for looking at what is good for you in relationships with others Now, what I recommend as well is that you look at your natal Mars and you look at your natal Venus. And these are going to show you what your relationship energies are more about. 
So your natal Mars is going to show you how you go for something, how you assert yourself. It's going to show you more about what you believe in terms of your masculine energy, your physical self, and what you desire. The Venus energies are about how you receive, what you need to feel good, to feel confident in yourself, uh, what makes you feel loved, and your overall relationship needs. I have two separate podcast episodes for you about Mars energies through all 12 astrological signs and also Venus energies through all 12 astrological signs. So please listen to both of those if you're looking for more understanding in how your own Mars and Venus operates. And keep in mind, they can be very different than these strong Leo energies. So we're talking about two different layers of energies here. Mars and Venus in Leo are the transiting planets. The transiting planets are what's happening right now, what's happening for everybody right now, Whereas your natal Mars and your natal Venus are where those planets were when you were born and they are more specific to you. They're more personalized and individual. So there's different energy layers here. But for those of you who want to know more and go deeper, I would recommend checking out your natal Mars and your natal Venus. So I hope this has given you some good themes to be aware of, especially as we move through the first half of July, and to stay very conscious of what's really coming up for you, what's really being revealed. And one thing you can do is check in on your heart and check in on your needs. How am I feeling about this? What needs are coming up? What is showing me where something is out of alignment? What am I seeing for the first time or what am I realizing that's no longer something that I want or that I connect with? You can ask very intentional questions to understand more of what's going on within you because that's going to also help you own it, to feel powerful, and to understand that this is your energy speaking to you. So Mars and Venus together in Leo, a new start is underway, a new beginning point, a new initiation of energy is coming through, and there are new levels of awareness, new things we've been learning that are also coming through at this time. So I hope this has been beneficial in helping you navigate the month of July. Uh, You can learn more about the month in my July Soul Growth Astrology webinars. Only 11 bucks when you use coupon code JULY. And this is the energy that takes you through all the transits of July, which is a very busy month. There's a lot of energy moving in July as we have transiting aspects almost every day of the month, which means a lot of activity, a lot of movement, a lot of energy shifting. So a very big month. Uh, Please check out the July webinar so you can see how these energies are moving around your chart and working with you more personally. Again, only 11 bucks with coupon code JULY. So as always, thank you so much for joining me today. It is a joy to connect with you as we continue to discuss astrology and the various topics and how these energies are working with us. I appreciate your time, energy, and presence. You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online where you'll find all of my latest astrology programs. And I'm also over on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. On YouTube, you'll find a variety of playlists that talk about all kinds of astrology topics, including transiting planets, uh, asteroids, uh, how to learn about your astrology more, and a ton, a ton of various specialty areas. So thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to connecting with you again every Wednesday and Monday. And in the meantime, I hope you have a beautiful day ahead. Take good care.